auricular medicine, we meanwhile have, as you have noticed, a significant number of frequencies at our disposal. So the question is, which ones are actually the most important for daily clinical practice? In offering my view of the most important frequencies, I venture to start with something negative, namely 363 hertz, the frequency for negative 4 EN or negative chi. This frequency can provide one of the best indications for most critical foci or blockages to healing and also actually is very useful in dental practice and supportive discussions surrounding the issue of hidden, buried, washed, and sealed away dental foci. Ultimately, these also have a negative chi. And finding these dental blockages is possible using Nogier frequency A, the frequency of unrest and disorganization. However, using the frequency 363, will make the findings more pronounced. In any case, if we want to assure ourselves that we have indeed correctly identified critical blockages, which is precisely the goal of auricular methods, to be confident that we have truly identified and not missed the most critical focus, then we can also, and should, secure such assurance by double-checking with the standard bar 7 frequency. So, why is the frequency 363 so important? Because if we miss a critical focus, then even the most well-intentioned acupuncture points won't have significant effect. The treatments simply can't take hold. And therefore, because it is so important not to overlook any possibilities, we should also there go beyond assessment using just the one point, namely the negative chi point, by also using the vitamin points. Now, in regard to the vitamin points, and I've said it many times before, in our normal daily diets, we do not necessarily have any significant vitamin deficiencies, contrary to what the supplements industry might want us to believe. Rather than vitamin deficiencies, when we find an active vitamin point in the superficial layer, it is likely a indication of a focus or blockage to healing. And so that would be the second assessment in this overview. In summary, starting by checking the negative chi point, followed by the vitamin points. And this also supports our framework of understanding, because what logically follows is that if we do find an active vitamin point, rather than simply concluding that a vitamin deficiency is the cause, it is helpful to consider the deeper story behind the activity. If a point suggests that a vitamin is deficient, then there is most likely a backstory to this indication. And this backstory could be explained in that the human system, in order to deal with the focus, used more of the vitamin in question. So when at the time of patient assessment I discover such increased vitamin usage by the system, I supplement it with a prescription for that vitamin. In principle, we could leave it at these two testing methods to assure we have not missed anything in our assessment. That is to say, the first method of using one point to check for all problems via the negative chi point, and the second method of checking vitamin points to identify a focus. However, there is a third important method for assessment that is extremely helpful in identifying blockages, namely the method of using the hierarchy of focus indicator points. The hierarchy is important to help prioritize a focus, especially when we find more than one. Besides, we are also interested in seeing how successfully the foci in the hierarchy are removed so that we can continue treatment by addressing new priorities that may arise.
And so it started some 35 to 40 years ago. When I began working with Paul Nogier, he had just found the histamine indicator point. And I can remember at that time, <laughs> I was uh, young once too, some 35 to 40 years ago, I had a patient at that time with an amalgam-related problem. But this patient had no histamine focus. It made me think there must be a point weaker than histamine that can be found. And so, from a dentist with whom I was befriended, I got an amalgam filing, which I used as a filter that could be added to the patient peripherally. The idea being that if you add the amalgam information to the patient's already existing amalgam information, you can make the readout of it stronger. In other words, increase the measure of it. In this case, peripherally adding the information of amalgam raised the amalgam problem to the level of histamine. So the amalgam focus actually became a histamine level focus, which we would have otherwise not have detected. So using this concept to create a type of projection, I was able to use the reverse logic in order to subtract the information, applying the information centrally in order to weaken a focus by one level or two levels or many levels depending on the case, making it then possible for me to discover and test the hierarchy of the five focus indicator points assessment. So by strengthening information to get to each of the focus levels all the way up to histamine and weakening to test back down from histamine to endoxin to prostaglandin to vitamin C and finally the weakest level of ginseng or laterality. Whereby the laterality point is truly a unique and interesting point. And this should be perhaps considered for an exam question, at least for advanced students. Owing to the fact that of the focus indicator points, the laterality point is the only point that can be active in all tissue layers. It can appear in the superficial ectodermal layer as a weak laterality instability. It can appear in the mesodermal layer as an indication of a focus activity. And it can appear in the endodermal layer as a deeper pathology resulting from a massive laterality disturbance. So all three tissue layers can be involved in laterality related disturbances. Well, so why is assessment using the focus indicator point hierarchy so interesting? Well, it provides us a framework of prioritization by which we can assess the patient's blockages to healing and a means of prioritization to guide treatment options and systematically measure the effects of the treatment. Of course, owing to time limitations in our appointments, we may not always use the focus indicator points hierarchy. However, at the very least, we should use this method in our first and second visits with a patient to assess the hierarchy of foci. The good thing is that if we are able to apply all three methods, we are much more likely to avoid missing a critical focus activity. It is, of course, extremely important in this medicine not to overlook a focus activity. So, for example, assuming that I only had the method of testing the negative 4EN and I somehow was distracted or did not find anything, then there is a great danger that I missed something if I didn't double check with the vitamin points and the focus indicator hierarchy. And to help us avoid missing a vascular autonomic signal on the negative 4 EN point, 
we can scan using the flower essence of organ grape. Organ grape has a complementary frequency to support a stronger VAS. So stronger than if we only use the three volt hammer. I always scan the negative chi point using organ grape. And I scan the yin tang and test for inversion using the three volt bar detector, since that is what I use most in my general assessments anyways. But the negative four EN, I always check with organ grape in order to be relatively sure not to miss any activity. Given this context, it is my view that the frequency of 363 hertz for the negative four EN is first and foremost of importance followed by the testing of vitamins, and then finally the indicator point hierarchy. And so, of course, now we get to the self-heal frequency, which can be viewed as a type of universal healing frequency.